So one thing I've always wanted to try was to, to, to fully 3D print a fan, or at least a, a majority of the fan I wanted to 3D print. However, I never really put much effort into it because let's, let's, let's be honest, it's, it's, a bit, it's a bit boring. Until I seen this image. This is the Tip Magnetic Driving Fan, or TMD, and it was created by Yin Sun Technology Corporation in like the early 2000s. Now, if you look at every PC fan currently on the market today, they pretty much all share at least one thing in common, and that is the drive motor is in the hub, and that's, uh, that's boring. Not the TMD. The TMD moved the drive motor, or moved the motor out of the hub into the four corners of the fan. You can see the drive coils that are in the four corners of the fan frame, and those act on 12 magnets that are stubbed into a ring around the impeller, and I thought this was pretty neat. But although I thought it was pretty neat, uh, this seems to be the only fan like this ever created, the only example, and we don't see them really today, so uh, it probably wasn't that good. Even more egregious is the fact that there is still a hub. Yeah, it's it's smaller than like a regular fan of the time, but it's still there, so that's a, that's a bummer. But this little fan led me down a rabbit hole of Googling until I came across this. This is the rim-driven thruster, and that's that's what I'm talking about. That's that's a fan. No hub. And yes, this isn't a PC fan, it's a it's a thruster for a boat, but the design is what I decided that I wanted to try to go for. I want to take the rim-driven thruster and the TDM and combine them together into like a real hubless PC fan with aspects like of both. Now the first thing I decided to do was the mechanical design. I figured, <laughs> I figured at least for me, that would be the easiest part. And then I could worry about the electronic witchcraft I had to use to make it spin later. I wanted to get a design down, something that I thought looked cool and would work. And then the, the electricity could be a problem for future James. So this is what I came up with. Let's start with the fan frame. I wanted this to be the size of a common 120 millimeter fan. So 120 millimeters by 120 millimeters was the footprint I had to work with. Thickness wise, where I ended up was 32 millimeters, which is two millimeters more than something like the Fantex T30. So we're kind of right in there. We're in the ballpark for what like a, a standard 120 millimeter fan is. Yes, this one's 25 millimeters, but the T30, that's 30 and we're, we're close. The next thing I decided to tackle were the, the drive coils. At this point, I really didn't know how I was gonna make them spin, but I, I knew that I wanted to go with a three-phase brushless DC in-runner motor, and after a bit of research, I learned that the best thing to use for the coil cores was iron, and since I, again, wanted this to be mostly 3D printed, I decided to use iron-filled PLA. And since I was going for a three-phase, I knew that I had to go with something divisible by three, so I ended up with 18 coils. Now, I didn't land on 18 for any specific reason, this is kind of what I decided the cores would look like. They would interface with the fan frame in sort of like a dovetail type groove, and I was hoping that once I had them installed, I would have enough space to do the hand winding of each coil in the frame itself. Now, I will mention that during this process, I received one of the Bamboo Lab X1Cs, the X1 carbon combos, and this printer is absolutely phenomenal. I, like you, have seen this printer on every single channel uh, on the planet. I never really thought much to it. I thought just, hey, they're just, Doing, a, doing real good marketing on this thing, but then I got one and I used it and I'm, I was actually pretty much blown away. It printed out every single part for this build and everything that I've just been messing around with since flawlessly. Better than any printer that I've ever used and the, you know, the tolerancing is just perfect. The thing's so good that I actually talked my work into getting one so we could use it on projects. Anyway, now that I had my drive motors somewhat sorted, at least I had them designed in a way that I thought they would work, I, I figured I would move to what I thought initially would be the hardest part of this build, the bearings. Now finding something off the shelf really didn't seem like a viable option for this. Like you can find pretty large roller bearings, but they're pretty expensive. And for something like this, I didn't really want to spend $500 on a bearing and then have to make the fan frame fit the bearing. I did mess around with thrust bearings. I thought that might be a good way to go. But in the end, I decided I would incorporate a normal roller type bearing into the fan itself. Around the top of the fan frame, I added a raceway large enough to fit a four millimeter ceramic ball bearing. And I went with ceramic because I figured that it was lighter, which was good. And also it would be non-magnetic, so I would have less issue trying to load the bearing with, without the ball bearing trying to stick to every single magnet in sight. I also added that same raceway on the top of the fan disc around the edge. I left just enough space with them assembled that I hoped that it would hold the fan in place without very much slop, but still being loose enough to allow it to spin freely. However, keeping the ball bearings evenly spaced meant that I was gonna to need to add a cage. Now, this was, I thought this was gonna be really tough. I didn't really know how I was gonna print something so delicate and finicky, 
Uh, I thought maybe resin printing, but again, the X1C absolutely nailed it. It kind of blew me away with how well it was able to print this little tiny cage without any warping or any stringing or anything. It was, it was fascinating. Loading the ball bearing was, it wasn't hard. It was a, it was a bit finicky as well. Um, I wanted the front of the fan to be smooth, so I wanted the front smooth side of the cage to face outwards, which meant that I had to load the bearings from the backside, which was a bummer because the backside was closed out by the coil. So after I had them wrapped in a way that I thought would work, I had to e gently remove the whole coil assembly from the frame. And then on each raceway, I left a tiny little cutout that when aligned was just larger than a four millimeter ball bearing. And if I had those two aligned and had the cage underneath it, I could press fit each ball bearing into the raceway. And this worked really, really well. The fan disc itself was going to hold the permanent magnets. And I went with some small neodymium magnets that I had found online. And I pushed them into a slot that I created for them and then just held them in place with a little bit of glue. And as I added them around the circumference of the fan, I just alternated North Pole, South Pole, North Pole, South Pole, all the way around. And if you're gonna make this fan yourself, I would recommend loading the, the magnets into the fan disc before you assemble the bearing. It would just be, it's just easier to get to. At this point, I pretty much had what I thought was a, a bladeless fan ready to go. I ended up using 24 permanent magnets and winding the coils in a three-phase configuration with 15 turns on each coil. I left the start of the A, B, and C exposed, and that's kind of just where I was going to plug in the fan. Uh, the A6, B6, and C6, I just cut them off short, scraped off some of the enamel, and then soldered them all together, covered them, and tucked them away. Oh, the last thing I did was add a back plate to the back of the fan. I did this just kind of clean everything up a little bit. Also, this was going to help hold the coils in place so they didn't try to work, them, work themselves out as this thing probably vibrated its life away. And I held these in place with 18 M3 by 12 flathead screws. And in the end, this is what I was left with. Now, so far, I'm actually pretty happy with this thing. It does spin. It does look like a fan, although a bit thicker, but it is obviously missing the hub, which I think looks really cool. I don't, I think we should tamp down our expectations. I don't expect this thing to one, be very quiet. I mean, listen to those bearings run around there just by spinning it by hand. Um, normal fans use fluid dynamic bearings that are silent. However, given this situation, that wasn't gonna be something I could do. Also, I really didn't spend much time thinking about the fan blade geometry. I just kind of made something that looked kind of like the thrusters I seen, and, and that was it. So maybe not optimized. I don't know how fast it's gonna spin, if it, if it does spin. And you know, I guess we'll find out. I'll, I'll put a tag on it so we can measure the RPM. I have it hooked up to this small little control board that I found online. I'll have all this information in the description if this is something you wanna to try to build. We're gonna go with, uh, try to start it with 12 volts and see if I got it correct enough to work. Oh! Okay, that, it hesitated for a minute. I thought it might not go, but it started out pretty, pretty easily. Come on, baby. It is really loud. I better get some safety glasses just in case. Let's we'll see if we can just see how loud it is at, I don't know, I'm about like 10 inches away. <laughs> oh god, I went the wrong way. It held together. I mean, it was like 91 decibels. It looked, what, 10 inches or so? <laughs> Maybe 30%, 40% speed. And then I turned it the wrong way to turn it off, and it cranked up, didn't break. We got her shut off. Let's see, uh, where's my RPM thing? So a normal Noctua is about 2,000 RPM. So let's see, I'm just going to get it going, and we're going to measure it.
faster. Oh boy. I'm going deaf. So we're getting standard, you know, desktop fan speeds out of this thing at maybe half speed. We got a little way to go, but before we send it, we better see if it's even moving in the air. Okay, that worked way better than I thought. It's holding together pretty good, so I think we are going to turn it all the way up. Where's the off? There's off. All the way up. I'm gonna hit the power, and we're gonna see how high it gets before it breaks, or maybe we'll get lucky and it'll, it'll hold together. We're about to find out. <laughs> this thing has far exceeded my expectations. We got up to about 2800, 2900 RPM and I mean it's still rock solid. It's, there's no no play. I mean it's loud as it's loud as all all hell, but it's holding together pretty good. I guess we'll see how much air it's actually moving. So I have this set up kind of like season four where it's simply just airflow through this wind tunnel. Uh, we'll run it full speed, see how it does compared to the other fans we know about and get an idea how well it's performing. Even though I lose a little hearing every time it goes off. I don't think my power supply can keep up with it. I don't, I don't, it doesn't feel like anything's getting hot. I just don't think I have a, a beefy enough one. But we got it about 386. Uh, I'll go dig up the uh, season four scoreboard and we can see how that kind of fits into what everything else did that season on this kind of same setup. But wow, yeah, really impressed here. Well, to tell you I'm surprised is an understatement. This, this thing held up incredibly well. It just kind of tanked all that damage. I mean, it's not even, the bearing has no slop in it. I mean, if anything, it spins better. It's kind of wore itself in a little bit, but there's no slop. The, the wires didn't heat up on the windings. I'm, I'm surprised, to be honest. I thought when we would crank up the speed that it would, what I really thought was gonna happen was that, one, the bearings were gonna start overheating in the channel because it's just PLA and it was gonna warp and let go, or I was gonna fry one of the windings and. The, the magical blue smoke was gonna come out and it'd all be all done, but that's not the case. Um, this thing didn't even get warm. None of the wires got warm. Nothing is loosened up. I mean, we could maybe push it even farther. I think this thing's rated up to like 35 volts 
and then like 35 amps. I don't even have a power supply with that that uh, that beefy. But I think if I maybe dug out an old PC power supply, we'd be able to get more better 12 volt amperage. But I don't know. Let, let me know what you want to do with this fan next if you want to see anything else with it because it's still here and I don't know if we can kill it. I mean, we can kill it. I can, I can pretty much break anything, but I'm almost kind of attached to it because it looks so cool even though I have tinnitus in my ears now because it's the loudest thing. One of the loudest things I've actually ever created on this channel, but it works so much better than I ever thought it could. And if you want to make one of these for whatever reason, um, you don't like hearing things or what not, I will leave all the, uh, all the models I'll download onto my, or upload onto my Thingiverse. You can pull them down, uh, download them, build this thing, modify it, do whatever you want. I'll leave a full bill of materials in the description below with links to where I purchased everything and the quantities that I used. So you can, uh, you can make one. If you want me to do anything else with this thing, let me know in the comments down below. I would be interested to know if you're more electrically inclined than I am. What did I do that was a bit overkill, underkill, not 100% correct, because uh, I was flying by the seat of my pants on most of this stuff, but I like it. Till next time.